The movie starts in Korea with a firefighter named Kim. While he is inside a burning apartment building, he rescues a child from the fire and escapes from the window. However, he slips before he can safely make it to his ladder. As another firefighter tries to grab his hand, he notices that his rope has caught fire and is about to break. But before he can pull Kim towards him, the rope snaps. Kim holds on tightly to the child as he misses the inflated life net and falls to the ground. The child gets out of his hold and rushes to her parents while Kim gets up as well and starts happily looking around, proud that he has been able to survive the fall. He soon realizes that something is not right when he notices two civilians staring at him. He calls out to them and tells them that they need to leave, but they begin to walk closer to him. Shortly after, one of them approaches Kim and introduces himself as Noah. He tells Kim that he will be guarding him as he navigates through the afterlife. Then, the girl next to him introduces herself as Lee. She informs a shocked Kim that they are two of the three guardians assigned to him. Despite their introductions to make Kim feel comfortable, he starts to freak out when he sees his friends trying to revive him. He looks at his guardians and begs them to let him see his mother, but they tell him that staying back in the living world will make it harder for him, and they send him through a portal to the afterworld. At the same time, his third guardian, Adam, attends his funeral, where he finds Kim's mother sitting in front of his casket while his brother tries to pull her out of her shock. Meanwhile, in the afterworld, Noah introduces Kim to Adam who calls him the Paragon, a righteous soul. Kim, who still hasn't been able to accept his death, refuses to shake Adam's hand and moves towards the large gate where a crowd has gathered. Lee walks in front of the group and inserts a ticket labeled Kim into a slot. After a few seconds, a projection displays that he is the Righteous One. She excitedly tells Kim that he is the paragon of righteousness and has the highest chance of passing through the seven stages. Soon, the four of them find themselves in the path of eternal fire, which leads to the hell of murder. When Noah notices where they are, he begins to doubt that Kim is innocent and asks him who he has killed. Surprised by the allegation, Kim replies that he has never killed anyone. This is when Adam speaks and reveals to Kim that the order of trials is decided by the King of Hell. This means that each soul is tested by the intensity of their sins. Noah tells Kim that Lee has the ability to see who he has murdered and she can predict how he will do at each stage. Just then, Kim gets a flashback of his time as a firefighter where he lost a colleague in the fire as the building had blown up. As soon as the flashback ends, the floor opens up to reveal hell beneath it with people trying to climb out of it. He tries to help them by reaching out when someone screams at him. Kim turns around to find the King of Hell calling out to him. The King's advisors claim that he had left his colleague behind, despite having more than enough time to rescue him, and they charge Kim with involuntary manslaughter. The King then gives Kim's guardians a chance to defend him. Adam starts talking and says that although Kim wasn't able to save his colleague, he had managed to save eight other lives. A projection begins playing and shows that Kim had followed his friend's instructions before he was killed. For this reason, the king decides to declare him innocent and he is allowed to move on to the next stage. The group then crosses a river where deadly fish try to attack them. Kim's guardians tell him not to make eye contact with them or they will take him into the water with them. Adam makes Kim promise not to talk back on the coming stage, especially in front of the God of Indolence. Lee suddenly speaks up and claims that she has gone through his life and found that he is innocent, which is why getting through this stage will be easy. As the group begins to celebrate, out of curiosity, Kim asks the three guardians why they are helping him. Noah confesses that after they successfully help reincarnate 49 souls, they will be given the choice to reincarnate as anyone they want, and Kim is their 48th paragon. As they approach the Hell of Indolence, Lee explains that he will be judged for how he chose to spend his life while he was alive. When they arrive there, Lee presents his case to the Queen and shows her visuals from his life where he worked tirelessly and risked his life numerous times to save both humans and animals. Moved by this, the Queen wants to declare him innocent instantly. However, she is interrupted by her advisors, who are curious as to why Kim had risked his life time and time again. Since it is a valid question, the Queen asks him what motivation he had for being this selfless. Instead of remaining quiet like he had promised Adam, Kim replies that he did it for the money. Disappointed, the Queen releases the raft he was standing on and pushes him towards the waterfall that leads to the Hell of Indolence. 
where people are getting crushed and eaten by fish. Just before Kim's raft can tip over, Adam rushes to his rescue and tells the queen that he was after the money because he wanted to get his mother the best treatment. He continues saying that Kim had worked day and night in hopes that he could help his mother lead a happier life. Moved by this, the queen changes her order and announces that he is innocent since he had good intentions. Having passed through the second stage successfully, the four of them head to a forest. Lee says it is the hell of deceit where souls are judged for the lies they had told during their lives. The trees in the forest are covered with large blades, which is why the forest is known as the Blade Forest. Adam, who is still angry with Kim for talking back to the queen, pushes him into a tree. The vines surrounding the tree wrap themselves around him and the blades begin to cut into his flesh. But he only helps free Kim when Lee begs him to have mercy. Once free, Noah tells Kim that he can visit his mother after he passes all seven stages. This excites Kim and he finds himself happy to get through each stage so that he can visit his mother in a dream and say his last goodbyes. The guardians take him to a dock where they sit in a boat that will help them pass through the forest quickly and safely. Just as their boat starts speeding through the forest, they notice a ghoul chasing after them. Adam notes that time in their realm is changing very quickly, which could only mean that a vengeful and bad spirit is after them. He asks Kim if there is any other immediate family other than his brother and mother. Before he can reply, the ghouls start attacking them and Noah uses his sword to keep them away. He then uses his sword to create a landslide and block the ghouls from following them any further. As their boat comes to a stop, Adam tells the other guardians that he is going back to the world of living to see who has died so that he can get rid of the problem. When Kim overhears their conversation, he begins to freak out, assuming that it must have been his mother who passed away. The two guardians calm him down while Adam arrives in the living world. He first goes to Kim's workplace and finds that his brother Park has received Kim's belongings. Sometime later, he travels to their apartment and finds that Kim's brother is constantly getting into arguments with his mother, who is mute. To his surprise, he finds the evil spirit in the apartment and chases after it. However, it is too fast and Adam quickly loses its trail. Back in the world of deceit, Kim and the two guardians get surrounded by more ghouls and prepare to fight, but a flash distracts them. They notice that it is the King of Hell who has arrived. The King asks the guardians to hurry up and burn the spirit's body so that their realm can go back to normal. Kim thinks that they are about to burn his mother's body and tries to argue with the king, but Noah holds him back. Meanwhile, in the living world, Adam arrives at Park's military base and discovers that he is missing. While he works to find an answer for Park's disappearance, Kim and his two guardians arrive in the Court of Deceit. The advisors reveal that Kim had written fake letters for his friend's daughter after he had died in a fire. The letters gave her false hope and caused a great deal of pain. In addition to these letters, he had also written fake letters to his mother for over 15 years. These allegations make Kim sound incredibly guilty, but at the last moment, Adam links with Lee and starts talking. He claims that the letters that Kim had written for his mother gave her hope, and she continued to fight while she was at the hospital, unaware that her son was away, working to pay the hospital bills. Then the daughter of his colleague had also grown up and managed to become much stronger. With this declaration, all charges against Kim are dropped and he is free to proceed further. As they move to the next stage, Noah asks Kim why he is so desperate to see his mother. He confesses that he had bought a new rice cooker for her since she now found it hard to cook and inside he had left one last letter for her. At that moment, Adam opens a portal in front of them and talks to Kim through it. He informs him that both his brother and mother are well. When Kim is out of earshot, Adam confesses to the guardians that his brother has died after he was accidentally shot by a colleague. He's going to burn the body before he can join them again. Once the portal disappears, Kim, Lee, and Noah arrive at the glacial canyon where the Hell of Injustice is located. In this stage, souls are tested to see if they led an unjust life. All of a sudden, an avalanche heads towards them and Noah manages to push them into a cable car at the last moment. While Lee is talking to Kim about how the Guardians don't have memories of their lives, Noah accidentally reveals that his brother has passed away. Before Kim can respond, the vengeful spirit causes their cable car to break and Lee slips. Noah catches her at the last moment, but he too is hanging by the thread. 
Kim uses his firefighter skills and climbs down using a rope and saves them. Back in the living world, Adam finds Park's body, which had been buried by his colleague, Song, and his sergeant. He hesitates in burning the body, but Noah appears and reminds him that the law requires him to burn the body. Adam tells Noah that he needs to go back and that he will handle the spirit. In the afterlife, Kim and his two guardians arrive at the Heavenly Passage, which is the Hell of Betrayal. He is able to pass through this hell as well since he is the Paragon. During this, Adam follows Song to a club where he finds him drunk. The vengeful spirit tries to kill him there, but Adam follows it. He eventually manages to catch Park's spirit and tries to convince him to help Kim. However, he denies helping a brother who had left them 15 years ago. He claims that his friends had buried him alive, but they did not hear his cries because they were too busy fighting with each other. That night, Song visits Park's mother and gives her a map pinpointing the location of her son's buried body. In the afterlife, Adam tells the two guardians that Kim has not returned home for 15 years. Hearing this, Kim begs Adam to bring his brother back to life since their mother is now left alone, but he replies that there is not much that he can do. After some time, they arrive at the vacuum sinkhole, which leads to a hell of violence. To pass through the sinkhole, each soul's weight of sins will determine if they are able to pass through. At this moment, back in the living world, Song tries to commit suicide, but Adam prevents him from dying when Park begs him to cut his rope. As a result of his actions, Kim and his guardians begin to sink deeper into the hole. Then they are presented in the court, where the king's advisors bring up a fight that Kim had with his weak brother. Since Kim had left a victim behind who had not forgiven him, the king finds him guilty of violence and is about to send him to hell. But Adam contacts Lee and asks her to convince the king for a joint trial at the hell of filial impiety, which refers to a violation of respect or duty towards one's family. The king agrees, and they head for the last stage. On their way there, Kim reveals that he had beaten his brother that night because he was trying to kill his entire family. Kim first wanted to kill his terminally ill mother, and then he was going to take sleeping pills to kill both himself and his brother. The reason he wanted to kill his entire family was because they led a miserable life, and no one had ever offered to help them. When he had failed in his attempt, he felt too embarrassed to show his mother his face again. In the living world, their mother arrives at Park's military base and tries to communicate that her son would never betray the army. However, she is soon sedated and taken away while Adam and Park watch from the sidelines. Not being able to handle his mother being manhandled, he turns back into a vengeful spirit again and causes a tornado to appear in the middle of the field. Everyone who was complicit in killing him is dragged inside. Adam calls Noah to the living world so that he can help kill the vengeful spirit once and for all. At the same time, Kim begins to sink inside quicksand in the hell of filial impiety for abandoning his family. Lee tries to help him, and her scream wakes Park from his thirst for vengeance. As he turns back into his human form, the king of the last stage emerges. Without hearing anyone's testaments, the king declares Kim guilty. In his defense, Lee tells the king that he is overlooking the fact that his heart was in the right place when he tried to kill his mother. She reminds him that there was no victim left behind, since his mother was unconscious. To their surprise, the king summons the Mirror of Karma, a hologram that shows images from the soul's life. He shows them that Kim's mother was awake when he tried to kill her. She had only pretended to be unconscious because she did not want to make life harder for her children. Seeing this, Kim falls to the ground as the king starts reading out his charges and declares him guilty again. Just then, the Mirror of Karma shows another vision of Park, telling his mother that he is a Supreme Court Justice now. He begins to tell his mother the truth about Kim's intentions when he tries to kill her, and that he had continued to work like a slave to make sure that they got to live better lives. His mother begins to cry as Park hugs her, forgiving Kim for his transgressions. The king, who had been watching the entire thing, chooses to forgive Kim for his sins as well and he is able to be reincarnated. On the other hand, Adam visits Kim's mother one last time and delivers the rice cooker her son Kim had bought for her. She finds the letter inside and begins reading it. She finds that he lied to her to keep her happy. Shortly after, Adam tells Noah to prepare Park for the afterlife since he is their next paragon, despite being a vengeful spirit. Thanks for tuning in. A thumbs up would be amazing because I've got some bills to pay.
back in my bag and I gotta brag, I do this shit for real And we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel